suicidal tendencies or intent to kill oneself, uh, that becomes an emergency. So, but before then, something in me um, made me to go through my phone because I do listen to WF Kumi through GCK programs on radio. So that day, I said, okay, I can connect. So I decided to say I'll pour out my mind because I just needed to release everything that was that was happening to me. So I just poured everything. So the pastors, they reached out to me and they preached to me and they led me to Christ. After then, I had this maximum peace, like there was this peace within me and all the challenges I was having left, right, everything just disappeared. Places that the thing I don't even know that is going to be a way out. God just provided the way out and every day by day I'm having a closer walk with him and I'm so grateful. God really led me to end my life and he has been faithful and guiding me through. Praise the Lord. Christ, anything that is contrary to the The land is ripe for harvest and the people are ready for a glorious visitation through Christ at the Independence Square Osu, Accra, Ghana. Thursday, 20th to Tuesday, 25th April 2023. Time, 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT on Sunday. It is for you. I said it is for you. The global world has tightened their seatbelts and all interdenominational churches are ready. I believe that with the coming of Pastor Kumi, Ghana, and for that matter, the churches in Ghana will not be the same. The enabling grace and power for end time harvest is for all ministers and professionals on the morning of 21st, 22nd, 24th and 25th days of the Global Crusade with Kumuyi at the Royal House Chapel, Kaneshi at 0600 hours GMT. We need to stand up and join hands, put away all our denominationalism, put it away, come as a Christian. Youth of Ghana and youth across the world, are you ready for an upward to higher height on the morning of 22nd April, Saturday, all 600 hours GMT? Myself and my team are working so hard to bring the students for the crusade. I have my foot, foot soldiers here. And I want to assure you, Chairman, that Scripture Union is going to mobilize the students to be impacted will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the world and engaging worship led by singer and gospel artist Jared Anderson. Your call, we're on over. And I want you to set your mind like you set your alarm. GCK. Yeah, yeah, dear. GCK. The, the gospel, gospel to every creature. creature. We pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 18, and the Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in a fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as a smoke of furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. We are going to open our mouths and pray this morning that God. We appear to us this morning in a mighty way. The glory of God will descend. As we appear in the mount this morning, the glory of the Most High will descend upon our lives. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says in that place, it said that the, the Mount Sinai was altogether in a smoke.
Let's open our mouths and pray this morning. That this morning, the glory of God will descend in the midst of his people. Let's open our mouths and pray. Talk to the Lord in prayer. This morning, that God will manifest his power in the midst of his people. The Bible says, in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. Let's open our mouths and pray. That Shekinah glory will descend upon the people of God this morning. Open our mouths and call upon the name of the Lord. Let's pray and say the Lord that God descend heavily in the midst of your people this morning. Call upon the name of the Lord. Open your mouth and pray. The Bible says, unto him that heareth prayer shall all men come. We have come this morning. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. That God will descend in a mighty way heavily upon the people of God this morning. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Hey guys, look, I just hit the gym and I wanted to jump on here real quick and share a piece of advice, okay? If anyone tells you that's just the way it is, talk to the Lord in prayer. Talk to the Lord in prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. In Luke chapter 24, verse 32, I read, And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us Why he talked with us by the way and why he opened to us the scriptures? We are going to pray this morning that this morning the word of God will burn like fire in every participant this morning. Open your mouth and pray. There will be no hiding place for the sinners and backsliders this morning because the word of God will burn like a fire in the hearts of the every participant. Open your mouth and pray. Call upon the name of the Lord. This morning, the fire that accompanied the word of God will penetrate every heart this morning. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. The word of God will pierce the heart of sinners, the heart of the backsliders, and this morning, it will take them where they are to the next level. Open your mouth and pray. And every one of us, the word of God will, you know, will pierce inside us this morning. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's pray that the word of God will discover everyone in a secret place that had a secret spiritually. As many that had a secret spiritually, the word of God will discover them this morning. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. The word is like a fire that breaketh rock into pieces. Let's pray that word will become like a hammer and the word of God will do something spectacular, something new in the life of every one of us this morning. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Call upon the name of the Lord. Prepare your heart this morning to get the best. The preparation of the heart is very, very important. The preparation of the heart is very, very important. Let's pray that the Lord will touch our heart this morning. Whatever that are there that is not in accordance with the will of God, with the word of God, the fire in the world will melt them away. Call upon the name of the Lord. Let the Lord remove you this morning. Let the Lord melt and remove you this morning and make you what you ought to be in the sight of the Lord. We are still praying. Please, as you are coming in, join us in prayer. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Prepare your heart and get the best. The Bible said in Psalm 42, verse 1, At the heart panted after the waterproof, so panted my soul after the O God. To the living God, where shall I come and appear before God? This is the hour. Task and task after God and pray this morning that God of heaven will do something new in your life. It must not remain the same. It must not remain the same. Pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord. Let the fire of God got up with you this morning. Let's pray. Prepare your heart this morning to get the best. We have come to the mount of the Lord. We have come to the mount of transfiguration. We have come to the place, the, the place where God is waiting for you to transform your life and to shape you and to mold you and to make you what it ought to be. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. We are still praying. The Bible says, I was glad when they said to me, let's come into the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord, there is deliverance. In the last house of the Lord, there is salvation. Open your mouth and pray. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray for the ministers. Of the minister, the officer, the minister this morning, that God will be with them. Let's pray. The Bible says, my word and my speech is not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but the demonstration of the power of God in the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and pray that the minister this morning will carry special fire to effect life positively this morning. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Talk to the Lord in prayer. The 
The Lord who has brought us here this morning has a plan, has a purpose. He has something to do in our life this morning. Therefore, you should not miss out of the blessing of the Lord. Let's pray that the word of God will have a free course in the life of every participant this morning. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Every wandering thought, every distraction, you want to avoid this morning. You want to concentrate 100% to get the best from the Lord this morning. Oh, pray much and prayer. Call upon the name of the Lord. Let's pray. The Bible says in Ruth chapter in Ruth chapter 24 verse 31, and their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. The eyes of sinners to be opened this morning. The spiritual eyes of the sinners. The spiritual eyes of the backsliders. Let's pray. The eyes will be opened this morning to know the Lord and to come to embrace the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. This morning, Lord, we do something new in our lives. Call upon the name of the Lord. Tell the Lord, do anything in my life. Whatever that's standing in between us and the word of God, let them melt by fire this morning. My brothers and sisters, let's call upon the name of the Lord. Close their eyes and talk to the Lord in prayer. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Close their eyes and get, talk to the Lord in prayer that our God will remove you. This is the end time. We need to pray. Whatever that are there, that are not for the glory of God, must be taken away. Those that are following the Lord are far love. This morning, the Lord will drop nearer to them. The Lord will bring them closer to himself. Open your mouth and pray. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. We are still praying, my brothers and sisters, that God will do something new in our life this morning. It will not go the way we came this morning. There's going to be a transformation this morning. Mighty power of God taking place in our life this morning to effect change spiritually and otherwise in our life this morning. Let's pray. Because a sower went out to sow, some fell to, some fell to good ground, some to stony ground. Let's pray. Our heart will fatter to receive the word of God this morning. Let's pray that our heart will be a good ground where the seed of the word of God will be sown in our heart this morning and will bear fruits, hundred folds. Open your mouth and pray. Let's present ourselves before God. Present that heart. The heart of man is the center of all activities. We need to pray that God will touch that heart. The Lord will give you another heart. The heart to know God. The heart to serve God. The heart to draw closer and nearer to the Lord. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. We are still praying. We are still praying. We are still praying. Talk to the Lord in prayer. This morning, the Lord prepared, he has prepared you know, a spiritual meal for us this morning. But you need to prepare before you swallow that meal, before you take that meal. Prepare your heart this morning that the word of God will have a free course and the word of God will have a place in your heart. Talk to the Lord in prayer. You will not be ever learning, never come to the knowledge of the truth. You must pray that God will help us to be doers of the world. Pray unto the Lord. The Lord will help us. As we hear, be graced to obey the whole counsel of God. The Lord will grant unto us. Not the hearers are justified, but the doers of the word of God. Call upon the name of the Lord. We are still interceding, we are still praying. We are still pleading to God that God will walk in our life this morning. Whatever that are not pleasing to the Lord in our lives, God will take it away in our lives. My brothers and sisters, close your eyes and go to the Lord in prayer. 
This morning, God is going to descend in a mouth. It's already here. The presence of God is here. And God will do you good this morning. Just go to the Lord in prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Our Holy Father, we thank you very much because... The Bible says, unto the shallest prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, we have been here this morning, but by heaven to prayers. Lord, we are asking, beyond our expectation, he will grant our request in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer prayer. Jesus, mighty and victorious name, we pray. We shall remain standing as we sing from our gospel hymns and song. Hymn number 157. Hymn number 100. And um, fifty seven. Wondering child, oh, come home. Have you wandered away from Father's care? Heavy hearted, said to you, Rome, thy sweet, gentle voice calling now to you. Wondering child, wondering child, come home. Is your friend black at risk of life ranging sea? Are you thoughts and its bureaus are flown? There are safe rebel home waiting now for you. Wondering child, wondering child, oh come home. He's pleading today. Heed his gentle voice as he bid you no longer to roam. So that dear father, house hated without delay. Wondering child, wondering child, oh come home. Child, come home. Child, come home. Wondering, child, why longer room? It is the father's entrance. Wondering, child, oh, come home.
Shall we pray? Our Father, we thank you very much this morning for the grace you've bestowed upon every one of us to appear in your presence. We're asking, O oh Lord, that as we go through your word this morning, you will teach us and you grant us the grace to learn from your word and apply this in our lives, in our Christian journey, in Jesus' name. We pray that you will help every one of us, O oh God, to retain what we learn in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. Some of us love the rain. We ride into it. And maybe see who's fastest. We step into it. Bessie, come alive in the rain. In our study this morning, uh, we are back to the Old Testament studies, and we are looking at uh, Lesson 27, which is talking on Dinah's defilement avenged. We will want to ask a fast reader to prepare to read the text for us. And then anyone who is ready at this time can come forward to take the memory verse for us. Anybody, can I see any hand? Anybody ready? Yes. Yes, please. Go ahead. The memory verse is taken from Genesis chapter 49, verse 5 and 6. And it says, Simon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitation. O oh my soul, come not thou into their secrets. O oh my soul, come not thou into their secrets. Unto their assembly, mine honor. Unto, um, come not thou unto their assembly. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the attempt. Um, we can take that together. It is in Genesis chapter 49, verses 5 and 6. Can we just take it together at the count of two? One, two, go. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitation. O oh my soul, come not thou into their secret. Unto their assembly, mine honor, be not thou united. For in their anger, they slew a man, and in their self-will, they dig down a wall. Genesis 49, 5 and 6. Thank you. Anybody ready to read the text for us? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Genesis 34, verse 1 to 31. And Diana, the daughter of Leah, which... Please, as you read, just read verses 1 to 18, then I'll give you a few okay. other verses to read. And Diana, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Ammon, the Levite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and um, lay with her and defiled her. And the soul cleaved unto Diana, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the dancer and spake kindly unto the dancer. And Shechem spake unto his father, Ammon saying, Get me this, this damsel to wife. And Jacob heard that he had defied Dinah, his daughter, and now his sons were with his cattle in the field. And Jacob held his peace until they come. 
And Ammon, the father of Shechem, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved, and they were very wroth, because he had wrothly fully in Israel in line with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. And Ammon came with them, saying, Thy son, the son of my this, this, the soul of my son Shechem longeth for your daughter. I pray you give out him to wife. And make you marriages with us, and give your daughters unto us, and take our daughters unto you. And ye shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell ye, and trade ye therein, and get ye possessions therein. And Shechem said unto her father, and unto her brethren, Let me find grace in your eyes, and what ye shall say unto me, I will give. Ask me never so much dowry and gift, and I will give you according as ye have said to me. But give me the damsel to wife. And the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Ammon, his father, deceitfully, and said, Because he had defied Diana the sister. And they said unto him, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised, for that we are a reproach unto us. But in this we will concede unto you. If you will be with us as will be, that every male of you be circumcised, then we will give our daughters unto you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and you will become our people. But if you will not have given unto us to be circumcised, then we will take our daughters, and we will be gone. And their words please Ammon and Shechem. Then Ammon go to son. verse 24, 24 verse, to 26. Verse 24 to 26. And, Ammon, and unto Ammon and unto Shechem his son, Akin all that went out of the gates of the city, and every man were circumcised, and and that went out of the city, all that went out of each city. And it came to pass on the third day when they were sold that the two of son, the two sons of Jacob, Simon and Levi, Diana's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the maids. And they slew Ammon and Shechem with the edge of the sword and took Diana out of Shechem's house and went out. 30 to 31. 30 to 31. And Jacob, said on, and Jacob said to Simon and Levi, Ye have troubled me to make me to sink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites, and I will be few in number. They shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, should he deal with our sister as with the allots? Praise God. Thank you very much. Uh, today, in our text, uh, we see that uh, Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, out of uh, probably sinful curiosity and the quest to explore new grounds of uh, friendship, uh, left home, probably without the consent of her parents, to see and to interact with daughters of the land, daughters of hidden. That careless visitation eventually led to the incident of her defilement and also the destruction of other innocent lives. The scripture truly tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, that evil communication corrupts good manners. We ought to learn, and the Lord will grant us the grace to avoid evil communication in Jesus' name. It is sad, it is shameful for people who have covenant relationship with God to mix up and even show interest in the lifestyle of sinful people that either live or work or school within their vicinity, which is what we uh, find many people today who are supposed to, you know, stand for the truth, you know, they are gradually compromising and shifting grounds, uh, trying to copy from what the people of the world are doing. But what the, does the scripture tell us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Brethren, uh, it is 
something that shouldn't happen that believers should begin to seek to be like the people of the world. Associating with people who have low moral uh, lives have exposed many unsuspecting people, especially youths, to become victims of uh, kidnapping, ritual killing, armed robbery, cultism, halotry, human trafficking, and even gruesome murder. I pray that the Lord will keep us, will not wander away in Jesus' name. We're looking at three points this morning in this subject. The three points, number one, dangerous exploration of unfamiliar territory. And then point number two, marriage proposal and deceitful offer. And lastly, we'll be looking at barbarous and bloody act under the sanction of religion. Let's come to point number one. Dangerous exploration of unfamiliar territory. In Genesis chapter 34, reading from verse 1, and Dinah, the daughter of, Je uh, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defied her. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel, and they spake kindly unto the damsel. And Shechem spake unto his father, Hamor, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. Now, if any girl in her time was to be counted privileged, that should be Dinah. Why? Her father, Jacob, as we all know, was a wealthy and God-fearing man. So what did she lack? Was it then, for want of any material need, that she embarked on this dangerous expedition, or rather a, a, a adventure? Was it that she lacked anything? Was there anything so interesting that she would have gone there? Perhaps she felt that her freedom was, uh, you know, her freedom of movement was being limited, like some people do today. And some don't know that the, the you know, the, uh, the, the warnings the instructions that try to, you know, guide us so that we don't wander away is meant to guide us so that we don't get into this kind of danger. Unaware of the evil tendency in unregenerate hearts, this girl ventured going out to see the daughters of the land. And you have seen already in the passage, in that process, Shechem, the son of Hamor, the prince of the country, saw her, took her, and lay with her and defied her. I want to ask a question here. Why should Christian ladies be wise in the presence of unbelieving young men? Why? I want to see some hands. Yes, if you are raising up your hand, please raise it up and let me see. Yes, please. Thank you. They should be wise because the heart of the unregenerate can is capable of... Thank you very much. We need to be on our guard. Careless visitation and unguided sightseeing are very dangerous to believers. And uh, brethren, you need to know that uh, with technology, with the information age, it doesn't require that one will have to go out like Dinah, right in a person's room. He can wander to anywhere through the internet. And... This has actually destroyed many lives. I pray that the Lord will keep us from wandering in Jesus' name. In uh, First Peter, First Peter chapter five, verse eight, the Bible says, "Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He will not devour us." The Scripture reveals that Satan inspires endless wandering to serve his purpose. He influences children to abandon their homes, their families, and wander away like the prodigal son. 
he desired to have them and to sift them like wheat. He moves even unstable believers to roam from church to church, fellowship to fellowship, until they get into error. He causes even married people to change life partners as if, uh, you, know, you know, sometimes without even any reasonable cause. And you even find that, you know, people that are supposed to be teaching others, some ministers, they rove around in different ministries, wasting their lives and their talents, and they are not stable in any particular place. Uh, the, 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 the word of God warns us in Proverbs chapter 21, Proverbs 21, Proverbs 21, verse 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. The Lord will help us, we will not wander away. We will not wander away. That takes us now to um, point number two. Takes us to point number two. In point number two, let's look at Genesis, that tw point number two, marriage proposal and the deceitful offer. Marriage proposal and deceitful uh, offer. In Genesis chapter 34, reading from verse 6, And Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the son of Jacob, the, the, the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved and they were very wroth because, uh, be, because he had wrought folly in Israel in line with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. And Hamor communed with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longeth for your daughter. I pray you, give her him to wife. Now, looking at this marriage proposal, you ask the question, is this not kind of a flagrant impunity on the part of uh, Shechem that he committed this immorality and the only thing he could just do is simply walk up to his father and say, get her to me to wife. Without even any sense of, you know, having done anything evil. And again, you ask the question here, did the father do any, did the father even rebuke him? Was there any rebuke at all? The young man just did what he did and then requested to get married, and then the father also just succumbed to the request, and then, without even any apology to the family of Jacob, just went and said, give her to my, the soul of my son. In fact, the lady was still in his house. And uh, you, if you study this passage very well, you find that this was not a one-day matter, because uh, she was still in the wife, until all these things, circumcision and everything, she was still in the house and no apology. He just came, you know. And unfortunately, some people today, as that, you know, not taking a stand to warn children uh, of evil doing. Not only this, they were now asking not only for marriage for Shechem, but also for other, you know, uh, uh, people in the land. You, the, you know, Hamor wanted that his people and the, uh, is, the Israelites should uh, intermarry. Brethren, do you know that intermarriage between Ke the Canaanites and the children of Jacob was a plan of Satan to terminate the covenant of God with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And we need to, you know, when we, when, when we, when we see things happen, we should really think deeply and uh, I pray the Lord will open our eyes. Now look at it. Some believers today who are being tempted, sometimes they fail to even understand that those things are the grand design of Satan, you know, to just, you know, destroy their lives, not even only for the present, but even for the future. I pray that the plan and the purpose of the devil will never succeed in our lives in Jesus' name. We should therefore... Be very vigilant and very, very careful uh, and um, make sure that the enemy does not get us cheap. Let's ask a question here. 
how should believers treat marriages or marriage proposals of unbelievers? How should you know, believers treat marriage proposals of unbelievers? Yes. Yes, please. The Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Therefore, a believer should reject any proposal from unbeliever. For the Thank you very much. We have uh, seen it before. Look at it again. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. It is very, very clear. It is clear there's no ambiguity in that statement. As you look also at First Peter, I mean, rather, let, let Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy 7. Reading from verse 3. It says, Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. God does not want believers to be, uh, you know, to be deceived because the devil just wants to, you know, uh, make the people of God to go astray, but he will not succeed in Jesus' name. So he says, for they will turn away the son, thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroyed thee suddenly. It will not happen to us. The Bible tells us in second, in, sorry, in first Peter chapter two, first Peter chapter two, and in verse 29 it says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Brethren, with all this injunction from scriptures, we need to uh, really guard against this kind of thing that happened in the family of uh, Jacob. And how do we guard against these things? One, every member of the family needs to make sure that we try to make our homes to be placed, to be desired by everyone. When the children actually, you know, get all they needed, all that they need in the, in the family, I don't mean just um, getting pleasures and all those things, but we, we, make, we make them to love home. Uh, they will not wander away. Not only that, we also need to really intercede. Because as we intercede for them, by the grace of God, the devil will not be able to deceive them in Jesus' name. And uh, let's also realize that uh, this is not only referring to children. All the other forms of wandering that we have talked about in this study, you know, people wandering, you know, from church to church, you know, wandering even on what they read and what they listen to. Because all these things, uh, people go out there, they see some books there, they wonder a way to read some books, they wonder a way to, you know, to watch some uh, whatever. They, some of them, they call them drama. Some of them, they call them things that, uh, you know, somebody has died and he's come again and he's uh, uh, telling story of what he saw when he died. What we have in the word of God taught to us by the grace of God in this church can make any believer stable and to make it to heaven. So why then do we want that? Then there are others that when they have little talents, they are running from here and there because somebody's inviting them here, somebody's inviting their, them there, and they are moving from fellowship to fellowship. I pray that God will not allow us to make this mistake to fall into the hands of uh, 
uh, you know, the devil that is running, running about seeking whom to devour. He will not devour us in Jesus' name. We see that um, uh, the, what Shechem did here and what the father did, the, uh, both the, uh, his uh, uh, sinful passion, uh, uncontrolled uh, you know, passion for sinful pleasure, and then the very fact that he was not even you know, remorseful about the whole thing, and the father also uh, simply uh, kind, you know, just uh, waved over things and just went ahead. Where did it land them to? It landed them to, uh, you know, untimely uh, death, which shouldn't have happened. Not only that, it also led to the wiping out of all the male in that city, a city which Shechem would have actually reigned over. Truly, sin terminates de destiny. Sin will not terminate our destiny. Lastly, we look at the third point, which is barbarous and bloody acts under the sanction of religion. In Genesis chapter 34, Genesis 34, verse 25, in verse 25, it says, And it came to pass on the third day when they were saw that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the males. And they slew Hamor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. Brethren, Shechem, his father, truly they were wrong for what they have done in dealing with the daughter of Jacob the way it should not be done. But then, does this give license or permission for the sons of Jacob to take laws into their hands and to do what they have done? They deceitfully demanded circumcision from these people, asking them that that was the condition under which they were going to be the same people with them. That was all lying. It was deception. All that they were doing was to design, you know, a kind of way to make them easy prey for massacre, to weaken them. This was wicked genocide. And uh, we as believers, we should know that you cannot use one wrong to correct another wrong. That uh, Shechem and Hamor were wrong. Uh, they, they, they did not give license to the sons of Jacob to do what they have done. And uh, they did it probably in the pretense of, uh, you know, religion, that they were righteous people. Uh, but they didn't think about the fact that, this, that, that deception is evil. They didn't think about the fact that destroying this life, not only that, because genocide, now you are wiping out people that, have not, that knew nothing about what has happened. Uh, and that was really uh, very, very bad. Uh, and uh, this study today is therefore uh, warning us so that we will not uh, take loss into our hands. God says, vengeance is mine. It is God himself who will repay if people do anything that is wrong. Now, eventually, when Jacob confronted his sons for what they have done, you know, in uh, chapter 30, let's look at chapter 30 of our text, Genesis 34, in verse 30. And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, ye have troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites, and I being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, should he deal with our sister as with a harlot? Well, there wasn't balanced justice here. In the first place, Dinah herself, if you really look at this story, can we say she was innocent? She didn't uh, do what the Bible recommended that if a young lady is being forced, that she should do. She didn't cry out. And they didn't even do any. And of course, we can't even see anybody correcting Dinah here. 
nobody said anything to her. She was just brought out as if uh, she, she was not part of what had happened. And then the whole thing now, they themselves all did, did not actually have the foresight that their father had, that they were just few in number. And God had promised Abraham, their forefather, that he was going to give them all that land. And what they had done now, if all the inhabitants of Canaan would all come up against Jacob, were it not for the deliverance of God, that who did not allow people to attack them, that could have probably wiped out also the lineage of Jacob and then hinder the plan of God. But thank God for his mercy. And I pray that anywhere we have gone wrong, the Lord will have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. And so, in the end, when people do evil, does it go unpunished? The truth here is that this passage shows us that people lose blessings, people lose virtue because of uh, sin. Number one, Dinah lost her chastity. And then Shechem also lost his princely heritage because he would have reigned over that land. And finally, what about the sons of Jacob in Genesis chapter 49? Genesis 49. Eventually, they also had their own share of losses. Genesis chapter 49, reading from verse 5. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitation. O oh, my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, my honor. Be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Was that a blessing? So we see that the Lord does not want us to take loss into our hands. This morning, with all that we have learned, God will help us. We will avoid the danger of careless wandering in Jesus' name. Shall we rise up to pray? Father in heaven, we thank you very much for what you have taught us this morning in these side scriptures. We pray, Lord, that you will help us, help our children. Not only the children, but even we adults will not wander away from you. Whether in the physical or wandering in the, you know, uh, cyber world or, and all that, I pray that, Lord, you keep us from all evil in Jesus' name. And when anyone has done wrong, we pray that you grant us the grace to be sober and to take corrections. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. Every business says they're better. But the ones that earn and display the BBB seal back it up. It instantly identifies businesses that are committed to operating with integrity, honoring promises, and telling the truth. Makes you wonder why every business doesn't have it. So look for it, because it's looking out for you. That's why it's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Praise the Lord. Today we have learned from Dina's defilement avenged. And that is from Genesis chapter 34. If we have any question from the passage we have just learned, can you come to the front of the auditorium where you are? Where the mic is. Can we have a question from this row? Good morning, sir. Um, so my question as regards um, today's message. Okay, there's a young lady who got pregnant for a non-believer and 
the parents are like, okay, go to his house until he's ready to pay your bride price. And now she's serious with God. She's a believer. She goes to church, does the work of God. But the bride price payment is not coming forth. Like things are hard and all that. So she's still in the marriage. She's still in the home. And they are having more children. So the question is that as she's there, is it that it is wrong for her to be there? Because maybe because the guy is an unbeliever or something. Or because he has not paid the bride price. And for someone like that that is serious, and she knows that it's not so okay that um, the guy has not paid her bride price, what should she do? Because the money is not really coming forth, you know, based on economy and all. Okay. Thank you, my sister. The money is not coming forth because of economy, but the economy is bringing forth one, two, three, four children. Is that true? Don't let us deceive ourselves when it comes to the issue of economy. If a man has the dream to marry, the first thing he has to do is to prepare for that marriage. As he's giving children, because the economy is bad, he can affair as, as well, perfect his marriage on the basis, even in the uh, condition of the economy. When people are looking for excuses, I tell you, the excuses will excuse them out. They can't, the excuses can't stand. So those who really want to do the will of God, they don't have excuses. Neither will any excuse excuse them out. He who has a right to make must do everything diligently and do the right thing, not economy. Is that okay? Now you are talking, what should he do? Whatever the circumstances that are surrounding that their marriage, they have a leader in their district, in their group. Let them go to that leader let them go to the marriage committee. They will really cancel and, and direct them on how to perfect their relationship. Don't let anybody hide on anything. It is wickedness that make a man to do wickedly and to live by that wickedness. Are you okay, sister? Now, can we take a question from here? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, that a man should not uh, be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And it also says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3, where the Bible in, uh, uh, enjoys Please, can you read Deuteronomy chapter 7, where you are quoting? 7, verse 3, where our um, by, uh, teacher has read to that we shouldn't, um, believers should not take wives and um, husbands from unbelievers. So my question is, at the time of um, Jacob and his children, the Bible says that the, their conscience was a law unto them because the Bible was not fully in place at that time. And we saw actually in the actions of Shechem that though uh, his acts were unrighteous in that he raped Diana, he put her in his house and he was not remorseful for his acts. Can we say that his actions and that of his father Ammon to marry Dinah lawfully was wrong? Being that Moses married Zipporah, if I'm right, and Jacob, uh, Joseph married Asenath, and even Judah, Judah's children married from the unbelievers. Can we say that their actions were deceived? Being that they wanted to make everything right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. If you look at the word of God, that deuteronomy where you read, where you are quoting, this is the instruction of God. Deuteronomy chapter 7, 
Let's read. And verse 2. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. And thou shalt have no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. My brother, this is the word of God. It's the command of God. You can really go back and look at what has happened in Moses. I mean, to really question God. God, why did you allow Moses? Why did you allow those uh, before you, uh, these people? God has given his word on how to preserve purity, holiness, and a nation that will obey his word. He has made all these things available for them. And God has instructed them, don't mix up with the unbelieving world. Ours is to obey. It is for God to direct us. And he's directing us by his word, the Holy Bible. And if we want to walk with God, if we want to go to where God is, this is the narrow way. This is the pathway, the Holy Scripture. We have to follow it. Going outside to quote all that has happened before the law, before Moses, all that has happened. Uh, she be this one did that before God gave this word. He still loved them. Why, after giving the commandment, why can he not love? You can't question God. The only thing you have as a man, obey the word of God. There is blessing in obedience. And God that is giving us all this instruction is giving us because of his love for us. Because he loves us. And he wants us to end well. Many have started, but on the middle row, they went off. They were no longer available. If you live by the word of God, and you allow that word to guide and to direct you, surely it will be well with you. That is it. Is that okay, my brother? Is there any other question from this side? Good morning, sir. According to the lesson of this morning, I found out that Dinah has already made up her mind to go with unbelievers. Likewise, what is happening today, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship are righteousness with unrighteousness? And what concord, what communion had light with darkness. So this place, I discovered that in as much as they have not paid for the dowry, Dinah has already decided to live with a man without paying any party for her. Then, comparing it, I am relating it to what is happening today in our midst. Our children today are also marrying unbelievers without minding where they belong to. In a case like this, what are we doing as parents? My second question is, when it is a marriage ceremony, our children rent hotels. Does it mean that we cannot provide a place for them to do their ceremony instead of exposing them in the hotel? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, the experience our sister is giving out is a case for concern. It is the drifters, people that are drifting from the pathway of righteousness that drifted into those experiences. The parents that have the vision will totally reject any form of drifting, any form of shaking out of the way. 
We have many of our youth that are married today. They copy from one church or the other. How they do their own. How they make everything. In fact, when you get to some of our youth today, if they marry committee, uh, the type that are not watchful and they are not supervising, you will know what is in the heart of the youth. You get to many reception, the way they organize themselves. They copy from here, they copy from there. But the marriage committee has a big work to do. The leaders have a great work to do. Parents will have a great work to do. The example of this lady that we are seeing today, from the way the lady drifted away, you will know that surely in her heart she has drifted. And after the evil, she remained put in that very place. And the same way, many of our children today, we pray to them truly. They live under our truly. And then they go to their institutions of learning. And then they see their friends. Many of them, idols are in their heart. When they come home, they will cover the idol, but the idol is reigning in their heart. At the point of marriage, then they will start to quote this, and they will even deceive you as a parent. And that is where we all need vigilance. Our heavenly journey, only the vigilant will make it. Our goal to get to the kingdom, as we are walking on the pathway, the narrow way, the narrow way is a narrow way. And because it is narrow, only the watchful will get to the end of that way, which is the kingdom where we are desiring. There are a lot of things to divert our attention. Parents, we must stand firm and make sure that these children are not just wondering all about. Now, the main important thing is for the word to be planted into their heart. Listen to them. Let them tell you their deviation rather than hiding it. If you are a, child, a parent that do not listen to these parents, they were drifted far away in the house. They will cover up they are drifting, and they will behave as if they are following you. When you are going to church, I'm still under him, I'm still under mommy, I'm still under daddy. And they will, by the time they have an opportunity to drift, you will see that they are in kilometer 50, far away from you. And this is where we as parents, we need to be very watchful, we need to really be determined to make sure that the children God has given you, you don't burn them for hellfire. And you guide them sufficiently through prayer. You guide them sufficiently through counsel. You guide them through love. And then you bring them and plant their feet on the narrow way. Except the parent is vigilant, the tendency for many children, just like Diana we are looking at here, to be drifted far away. Why? They are in the same secondary school. They watch what the maids are doing. They hide it in their heart. The day they, are, they have the privilege, and Diana today had the privilege, all the brothers have gone to work. He is here, he can be free. The day these children have the freedom, you will see what has been planted in their heart. They will drift away from the pathway of life. And my prayer is that God will give us children that are born for the kingdom. I was down to talk to my doctor about Rebelsis. Ask your health care provider about Rebelsis today. God will give us children that are living in the kingdom. 
that at the end of the day, you will not see your children going into that hell while you are going to heaven. Do your best. Pray very well. Your prayer, your counsel, your watchfulness will surely bring these children back. Many of the children, they have drifted. Even in the church today, we see a number, really, who have drifted away. You will see it in their reception. As our sister said, they, will, they, they are jerry coiling. The kind of air they will bring to the reception, you will ask yourself, are these members of the church, our youth workers, you have a work to do. Our pastors, we have a lot of work to do. Because watching these people going that way, what will be the future of the church? I know God has planted his own people, and God will make them to stand through all weathers and through all the storms of life. I pray the Almighty God will establish every one of our homes, our families, in Jesus' name. Today we have seen appreciate him for his faithfulness. Let's thank him for all that he's doing for us in this church. Let's appreciate him for all our leaders. Let's give him thanks. Let's appreciate him for the life of our Father in the Lord, the grace, the Lord that is doing through him, the protection, his preservation, and the power of God. Let's bless the name of the Lord. I appreciate God. Give him thanks. Because of the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed. Let's thank God for the seeds of global crusade. A life transformed, life saved, healings, miracles. All these are the work of our God, the act of mercy. Let's appreciate him. Let's give him thanks. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are here for the study of the word of God. We want to pray that God will give you a receptive heart. That all we are going to hear tonight, all we are going to learn tonight, you will do. We will be obedient. I will carry out the instructions. We will not be forgetful hearer, but be doers of the word of God. Open your mouth and pray that you will not be forgetful hearers. That's many that are coming. Do not just be like a song that is sung, but that we take an action, overt action, to practice the word of God. It is the doers that are justified, not the hearers. God will give us a retentive memory and the grace to do the work of God, to do the word of God. Let's pray. This week is going to be glorious. Starting from Thursday, the global crusade. Let's pray that God will move in an unprecedented way. In a manner that we have not seen before. Much more than all. Glorious visitation from Christ. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be glorious. Miracles. Signs, I wonder, beyond our widest imagination, God will perform at this crusade. Let's pray. For Father and the Lord, that the Lord will strengthen him. The Lord will help him. The Lord will be with him. And your command, anointing of God will continue, that none of his word will fall to the ground. As he preaches, as he prays, miracles follow. Extraordinary. It will be a miraculous outing as we have never seen before. Unparalleled, 
with all our crusade, pray there will be power manifestation in this crusade. And no man, no power, be able to stand against him as a minister, be a devouring administration, be devouring, devouring sins and evil powers. Let's pray for tonight's Bible study again that the strength of the Lord, the power of God, will be to our Father in the Lord as He teaches. There will be auction, and the teaching will read the inner recesses of our hearts. Nobody will leave this place as He comes today. Would have have added virtues, added grace. Added courage, added law. Open your mouth and pray. That you will not just come as people come it, but you will come and as you be going, you have virtues, virtues, so that we can be who God wants us to be. Go to where God wants us to go. Living a life that is pleasant to God. We need the grace of God. Let's just spend a few minutes for the crusade, the publicity, all that we have done. The people will come and they will be born again. Re transformation. The grace of God will be evident in their life. Holy Ghost convert in our locations here in Nigeria, all over the world. The power of God will move in an unprecedented manner. In Jesus' name we pray. Our God, we thank you for the privilege we have to pray. Our people of this request to you, we know that. You are prayer answering God. You grant answers to all these prayers in Jesus' name. Let tonight Bible study be of immense benefit to our soul, spirit, and body as you envelop our Father in the Lord, be your glory and grace in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us pray. Our gracious Father, we are grateful unto you for the privilege to be in your presence, to study at your feet. We are praying and asking that as we have come tonight, you will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. And you open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your world. And you will cause our heart to listen and to obey your word tonight in Jesus' name. As we sing and glorify your name at this point, we we'll pray and ask that you accept our praises in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. The Lord reigneth, the Lord reigneth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For the Lord our God, omnipotent, he reigneth in majesty. The Lord reigneth. The Lord reigneth, blessed be the name of the Lord. For the Lord our God, omnipotent, he reigneth in majesty, praise his name.
Omnipotent God, omniscient God, omnipotent God, you are worthy to be praised. Omnipotent God, omniscient God, omnipotent God, you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent redness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent redness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Omnipotent Renate, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. In the whole of his hands, in the whole of his hands, I am safe, whatever may betide me. In the whole of his hands. In the whole of his hands, in the whole of his hands, in the whole of his hands. I am safe whatever may betide me in the whole Lord of his hands. In the whole Lord of his hands. Thy word is life, thy word is spirit. Write your word, O Lord, on the table of my heart. Thy word is life, thy word is spirit. Write thy word, O Lord, on the table of my heart. Thy word is life, thy word is spirit. Write thy word, O Lord, on the table of my heart. Thy word is life, thy word is spirit. Write thy word, O Lord, on the table of my heart.
I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible is the word of God. I believe. I believe. Oh, yes. I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible is the word of God. Hallelujah. I believe the Bible, oh, it is divine. Heaven's golden sunlight in its faces shine. Lights my way to glory, and I'm surely going through. I believe the Bible, for it is ever true. Oh, it is divine. On I believe the Bible, oh, it is divine. Heaven's golden sunlight in its faces shine. Lights my way to glory, and I'm surely going through. I believe the Bible, for it is ever true. I believe.